Dozens gathered in Orangeburg today as part of presidential hopeful and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley's Beast of the Southeast bus tour. Ahead of South Carolina's Republican primary on February 24th, Haley plans to make more than 30 stops across the Palmetto State. Live 5 was there at the rally today and after I was able to get an exclusive one on one interview with Nikki Haley herself. It's a story you will only see right here on Live 5 News. Haley was welcomed to the cinema in Orangeburg by a standing crowd cheering. She touched on several subjects today, including former President Donald Trump and how she says he continues to be divisive. Your job is to bring as many people in as you can because you have to represent everybody. She also responded to his remarks he made at his rally yesterday in Conway, asking why Haley's husband wasn't with her on the rallying tour. And he goes and mocks my husband's military service. <laughs> Now, my sweet husband is deployed as we speak. And what I said to him yesterday, and I'll say today, is Donald, if you have something you have to say, don't say it behind my back. Say it to my face on a debate stage. Life Eye was able to speak exclusively with Haley about several topics. If you'll recall, Haley was governor during the Mother Emanuel AME Church massacre where nine black parishioners were gunned down. Some have said she won't acknowledge racism in America, but she clarified. I have said there is racism in America. I have no problem saying there's racism in America. I have said it is America is not a racist country. The premise of America was never meant to be racist. There is racism in America and we need to stomp it out everywhere we see it. And we need to try to make today better than yesterday. That's our goal. And so just like we brought South Carolina together in the tragedy of Mother Emanuel, just like we brought South Carolina together in the tragedy of Walter Scott, the goal is we need to continue to bring America closer and closer together instead of dividing them based on other issues. During Haley's time as governor, according to reports that the number of incarcerated people dropped 15% and South Carolina had one of the lowest recidivism rates. This is how she would translate that across the nation. Well, you look at what we did. We basically, I went and reformed the entire prison system and the goal was we taught them computer skills. We taught them resume building. We taught them family planning and financial planning. We gave them faith-based help. But the biggest thing we did is we put equipment behind the fence and we taught them a skill. Now in South Carolina, when someone leaves the fence, they've got a job to go to the next day. That's why we have the lowest recidivism rate in the country. What I want to do is move as many federal programs as we can down to the state level so that we reduce the size of the federal government, but we empower people on the ground. And then I want to make sure that I meet with our governors once a quarter. Right now, presidents only meet once a year. We'll meet with Republican and Democrat governors with the sole focus of supporting them in that process so that we can focus on lifting people up, just like we did in South Carolina. She also touched on her pro-life stance. I think there is a place for a federal law, but I think we have to be very honest in how that comes about. I am unapologetically pro-life, not because the Republican Party tells me to be, but because my husband was adopted. I had trouble having both of my children. Having said that, I don't judge anyone for being pro-choice any more than I want them to judge me for being pro-life. I think it's right that it's back in the hands of the people for every state to decide, but when it comes to a federal law, in order to pass that, you have to have a majority of the House, 60 Senate votes, and a signature of a president. We haven't had 60 Republican senators in over 100 years. We might have 45 pro-life senators. So no Republican president can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president can ban these state laws. So the only way to come together is to find consensus. Can't we find consensus to ban late-term abortions, to encourage good quality adoptions, to say a doctor or nurse who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them, to say that contraception should be accessible, and to make sure no state law says to a woman that if she gets an abortion that she's going to jail or getting the death penalty. Let's start there. We've got to humanize this issue and not demonize this issue. The overall goal is how do we save as many babies as we can and support as many moms as possible. Now, if you would like to see the full exclusive interview with Nikki Haley in its entirety, you can find it on live5news.com. We also requested a one-on-one -on -one interview with former President Donald Trump at his rally yesterday in Conway, but he never responded.